What's up guys? Do you feel sometimes that your joints are limiting you in your workouts? Are your joints hurting? Are your knees, shoulders, elbows? Are you getting those pains from lifting heavy weights all the time? Are you finding that that pain is limiting you in your workouts and maybe even slowing you down? Well today I'm gonna to show you a trick that's gonna help you keep building muscle, but help save those joints, help you recover, and help you grow in just five seconds. So what is this mystical training method that I'm talking about? It is known as time under tension training. This is gonna involve eccentric loading, concentric loading, and isometric holds. But what it's not gonna involve is you smashing your joints to pieces. This is not gonna require heavy loads. It's gonna require you to have a good mind to muscle connection, which is something we always want to build. And today I'm gonna to show you one exercise for every body part that you can put into your training routine to help you develop that muscle, but also give your joints that little bit of respite that they might need. You can put this into your normal routine, and obviously, as you get better at this, maybe put two exercises into each routine. But for starting out, just one will do the job. Let's crack on. So we're gonna start it out on the lower parts. We're gonna start with some leg extensions. Now the process of this is gonna be five seconds over four phases. So we're gonna be doing a concentric, an isometric, an eccentric, and then a stretch. Each one for five seconds. Most important thing on this is gonna be the longest explanation because so many people fuck this up. You want the pivot point in line with your knees. You want the back of your knees on the pad. If your knees are not on this pad and they're further forward and there's a gap here, you're gonna put stress on the knees and bust them up. Bad times. Handles are here for a reason. Grip and pull on the handles as you drive. That's gonna keep your hips down. How many people do you see doing this stuff? That's because they're not thinking about their body. They're thinking about moving weight from A to B. This method is gonna make you think about mind to muscle, and it's gonna make you think about contractions and help you connect and also find bad habits that you've got and help you fix them. So, find a way that you can do around 20 reps on. We're gonna be doing eight reps of the slow holds. Then we're gonna finish with 12 normal reps. The five second phases, easy. We're gonna come up for five second count. Feet parallel, two, three, four, five. At the top, point the toes, squeeze the quads, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Bring the toes in, start lowering down, over five, four, three, two, one. As it comes towards the base, don't let the stack touch, and hold that stretch there, hold that load, five, four, three, two, one. And we're gonna repeat this eight times, slow and steady each way. This is gonna stop you kicking out and having those bad habits of just swinging the weight through. Once you've done all eight of these and you get to the bottom, you get that final five count hold, then it's straight in, 12 reps, gripping those handles, keeping those feet parallel and toes up this time. If you want to, you can point the toes with a little less control. You're getting those 12 reps and you're gonna really feel that burn, that blood right in the muscle. Once you hit that 12, down, rest. You're gonna do three to five sets of this, and I promise you, you will feel nothing like it. You will have no joint pain, but maximum muscle activation. Next up, arms. So triceps, we're gonna be using the V-bar and the cables. Now you can alternate the grip. Accordingly, as you play with this, don't be afraid. What I show you here, you can take it and go, but then go and twist things around and make a move as you see fit. But we're gonna take, again, the same thing, a rep range where you can do 20 reps on that weight, eight and 12s like before. For this, pointers, shoulders back, rib cage down, hips slightly kicked back. What we're not doing is leaning over. From here, you're gonna keep that scapula engaged. You're gonna pull down with the elbows, and this is your start position. Start right, you'll finish right. From here, we're gonna come down. Five, four, three, two, one. Squeeze, flex that tricep at the bottom. Look how my arm is at an angle. What I'm not doing is this. Arms at a slight angle, and I'm squeezing that tricep. I've got a little bit of flexion at the wrist. Then I come back up. Five, four, three, two, one. No elbow movement, no swinging back and forth. Shoulders still in place. At the top now, I'm gonna squeeze my biceps and help stretch that tricep. Five, four, three, two, one. Before starting all over again. Eight reps like that. And then we're gonna move straight in. 12 reps, strong, focusing, no swinging. Squeezing that tricep at the bottom. Squeeze that bicep at the top. Bam, 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 bam. Biceps.
Bicep curls with the straight bar on the cables. Now we're doing it on the cables because it can offer constant tension if you put a little bit of a body lean on. But you can do this with dumbbells, you just gotta be super controlled and not get lazy. What we're looking for on this, we're looking to keep our elbows tight and in a fixed position. What I'm not doing is let my elbows swing back and forth. Again, my rib cage is down, my scapula is engaged and I'm not pigeon necking. So tuck that chin in and keep that nice alignment. From here, we're gonna come up over five seconds. Three, four, five, squeeze at the top. One, two, three, four, five. Not doing this. Keeping those shoulders down now because this is the point where people wanna do that hunch over and shoulder release. We're gonna release out, away from the body. It's five, four, now the bicep's under tension. Three, two, one. Get to that bottom, keep an angle on the arm now. That's gonna keep tension on the bicep. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, before returning nice and slow. And look at the tension on the muscle, veins popping. This is not heavy weight. If I was to just rep this, all day, all day. But you do it this way, you're creating overload with light weight. And like I said, once you've done those eight reps, back in with those 12, keeping that form, no swinging, not letting the elbows kick back, elbows fixed, shoulders back, chest up, rib cage down, chin in, boom. Big biceps, five seconds. Next up, shoulder press. Now this is one that causes a lot of pain for a lot of people. It's also one where people have a lot of bad habits and get injured from it. By doing the slow work on this, by doing the time and the tension, we're gonna realize those bad habits and we're gonna help create that mind to muscle and form connection. We're gonna do this without a supporting back on this one. But if you find it's a little unstable without it, you can put the bench seat upright and have that as a rest point behind you. Bring the dumbbells up. We're gonna turn them out. This is our start point. I want my rib cage down. I'm going to make sure my feet are planted. And from here, I'm going to tilt the dumbbell heads in. Real, real little tilt, bing. This is going to keep it all focused on that shoulder. I'm going to come up over five seconds. Three, two, one. This is working my core and everything now. At the top, what I'm not doing, banging and touching. Coming up, straight arms, shoulders down, not hitching. Then coming back down the exact same way we went up. Over five seconds, two, one. Gets that base. Keep that load point, don't let it touch the shoulders. Hold for five, and then repeat. Obviously once we get eight reps in from these, then we're gonna try and maintain that. It's postural strength, rib cage down, keep it controlled, and rep, 12 reps, to the death, to the pump. And tell me, after doing that, give it one go, and tell me that doesn't feel as good as those heavy ass shoulder presses you ground through, gritted your teeth on, and end up tearing up some fucking tendons. So a bit of chest. We're gonna be using, if you have one of these, single arm plate loaded chest. Single arms are best, what we don't want is something that moves in a uniform manner where you move the left and the right moves automatically. We want that independent arm. So if you don't have one of these, opt for a dumbbell variation instead. But these are one of the best ones, especially if you're trying to protect the shoulders, if you do this correctly. So what we're looking for is, we want the handles to be around about nipple height. So I want that just one click up. That's perfect. What I want to do here is I want to make sure that I'm planting my feet and driving my hips back into the machine. You'll see a lot of people's hips creeping forward as they try and press out a struggle. That's not what we want. We want to keep all that drive in the pad behind us so we have something to press against. Same as a bench press on this, what we want to be looking at is arching that lower back, pressed against the machine, but keeping the rib cage down. We're gonna be rolling the elbows in a little bit, and as we come down, we're gonna keep our lats contracted, and as we drive out, keeping all that contraction explode out. Taking that load, this is gonna be a part where we come back down to. That point just off where the pads touch, but what I don't want is an overstretch on the shoulders. So, making sure that the handles are in front of the chest, not right alongside where we're just gonna be stretching tendons. Five seconds up, three, two, one, making sure that my elbows look uniformed. A lot of people you'll see have one rotated out or one rotated in, that's usually due to shoulder impingement of some form, so take note. Holding at the top, what I'm not doing is locking my arms out and putting all the load on the elbow, keeping my shoulders back and just before complete lockout of the joints and holding it here, five seconds. Then eccentric, five seconds. And what I'm not doing on this is allowing the shoulders to hitch up and the elbows to come high. I'm keeping those shoulders down, chest up, rib cage down, driving my heels into the floor, hips back. Three, 
two, one. Then we get to that stop point and natural stretch. Don't overstretch. That's your whole point for the five. And then repeat. Obviously, once we've done this eight times, just as before, we're gonna get down to that bottom load, hold it for that final five before exploding back out now. Everything we've just engaged, everything we've just created in that mind to muscle connection, boom. 12 reps, squeeze, force that blood in, but make that muscle work. And we're only using a lightweight, single 20K plates on the side on that. There's gonna be plenty for that. Again, a 20 rep rep range, and you will feel this in the chest. If you're feeling the shoulders, reset, adjust, learn. Keep going. back and for this one we're going to be using the lat pull down i love this machine but it is one that people often have a big disconnect in their shoulder areas they also don't have a lot of control with their rib cage and midsection this is going to help fix all of that plus keep a healthy scapula because your scapula are going to be crucial here in controlling the shoulders what we're looking for is not an overly wide grip grip to wherever is natural if you're not over six foot you don't need to be grabbing the edge of the bars just use your sense on where it feels good we're going to grip just past the bend anyway we're gonna sit and make sure our knees are pinned underneath this pad. Your feet should be solid to the floor with a right angle up into the pad and you shouldn't be able to move your legs underneath that pad. That's important because we're gonna drive against it. From here, we're gonna set shoulders back and down, rib cage down, chest up. It's gonna feel weird and a little bit tight, but it's perfect. From here, we're gonna pull from the elbows. The movement starts here, not at the hands. We're gonna pull down from the elbows, five seconds, get to that top. squeeze point is here not here don't try and come overly low just to the top of the chest or wherever feels natural for a squeeze drive your elbows and almost like you're trying to pin your lats under your armpit squeeze and don't let that rib cage pop up then release five four three two one keeping the shoulders down and then hold five seconds at the top then it's just eight reps of that repetition five down a five hold making sure the shoulders aren't rounding forward, chest up, rib cage down, pull it as close to the face as possible, five on that way back up, and then we're gonna rep those 12 reps again, but what we're not gonna do is start fucking swinging, no aping around. What we want, keep that chest nice and high, put the rib cage down, arching the lower back, and we're gonna pull through clean and rep. Thinking about those contraction points, thinking about that controlled release. 12 reps, really feel that stretch, and you will feel that from here all the way down. If you're feeling it in your shoulders or anywhere else, you need to readjust that control of the shoulders, keep those scapula engaged. This is a fantastic movement and it looks great when the camera's behind you, not in front of you. Sorry, man. <laughs> so Lex wanted a back shot, so there's the back shot. <laughs> Last but not least, we're back on the leg extension machine and this one is for seated hamstring curls. The reason we're doing this over lying curls is because there is no lower back tension when we do it this way. So for setup on this, the same rules apply. We want our knees in line with the pivot point. We want that seat further back rather than too far forward, if anything. We're gonna grip on the handles. As we curl under, what we don't want is to allow, as soon as we pull, those hips to shoot forward. You'll see this all the time. People end up halfway down the seat here. Because what they're doing is using their body weight to pull the weight through. We're gonna keep our grip on the handles. And we're gonna push our hips back. If you have a pad that comes across the knees here, what you can do is actually reach forward and lean and grab in front of you here so that you end up with a heavier stretch on the negative. It's gonna, you're gonna feel it way more. If you don't have it like we don't have here, we're gonna push ourselves back into the seat. We're gonna curl through with our heels, keeping our toes up. So we're gonna curl for that five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Squeeze at the bottom. And what you wanna think about here is squeezing like you would squeeze a bicep. You should feel that. The hamstrings are the biceps of the leg. So squeeze, hold. What we don't want to allow is those hips to shift, shift forward, knees to shift up. Everything stays down. The body's going to want to compensate. Fight it. Then five seconds, hold. Back up, eccentrically. Five seconds. Again, don't let the hips shoot forward. Don't let those knees rise. Think about pushing your knees down through your legs as the feet come up. Hold that top point. Don't let the stack touch for five before repeating the process again. Once we've done those eight reps, when we get to that final hold, once we come back to the top, we're gonna hold for that five seconds, and then we're gonna rep in. And again, once you start repping, don't start sliding. Get that full negative stretch. Keep those hips back. If you find that you're not really getting that stretch on the negative, or the stack's hitting too early, lean a little bit forward, and really hold and grip 
with an underhand grip on the machine and keep those hips down so you end up being here and then you're really going to be able to feel and control that stretch this is vitally important to make sure you control at the knees and the hips this is going to burn like a mother it is going to really really hurt it's going to test you so start light think about control and contraction throughout all of these exercises control and contraction but what it's going to prove to you is you have a good mind to muscle connection that you can build you have errors that you're going to see from having to go slow rather than fast that you're going to be able to fix and once you do that when you translate this back into lifting heavy those weights are going to move smoother they're going to move more controlled and more importantly you're going to know what you can lift in real weight rather than just weight you can shift from a to b as i've said before i'll say it again don't shift it lift it i hope you've enjoyed this episode this has been time under tension training five seconds four phases to a bigger better you catch me in the next episode if you have any comments make sure to leave them down below hit that notification bell to make sure you're notified of all these videos so you don't miss out on anything i'm lex and i'll catch you in the next one boom baby lately i've been doing shit different cooking like a chef i've been all up in the kitchen had to make a move had to make a little distance a lot of people tripping they could never see the vision fuck that tell them bounce